Well, hello again. Thanks for joining me. Now, today I have a little bit of a different episode which I'd like to present to you guys. But um, you would have heard me say plenty of times before that I believe anything can be made into a great nightscape image. And I think all it takes is a little bit of planning. So I'm going to show you a few locations where I have shot nightscapes. And I want to show you the mindset that I had when I went there. And I want to show you these scenes in the daytime so you can see what they look like. And I think a lot of people would just walk straight on by without even giving it a second thought. But I want to present to you today that anything can be used as a good foreground image for a nightscape. So let's get into it. Now a good example of what I'm talking about is this old tank stand. Now it's absolutely fallen apart and it's in disrepair. And yet with a little bit of uh, lighting around the edges and even this old wire that's stuck in the middle of it there, it actually looks pretty good. So I was here one night and I shot this um, with the tree lit in the background and it came up really well. Often I've walked past this heaps of times and I haven't given it much of a second thought because I've been at this location plenty of times, but just once I thought, what if I have a go at that one? And that's the result. Now, I honestly couldn't walk past this scene without coming back here and revisiting it. Now, this uh, scene here featured in one of my recent videos, and you'll remember that one. And to be absolutely honest, this is just junk. And you would walk past this every day of the week. And yet, when I walk past it, occasionally I used to think, I wonder, I just wonder if I can make something out of that. So, you saw the video. It just goes to show that you can make anything look great with a good bit of lighting. Now here, it's got a nice open view of the horizon, which is one of the elements that I was looking for. So put the two together and you can come up with an incredible nightscape. Okay, now one of the things that I'm looking for when shooting in nightscape is perspective. I want to see what the big picture is going to look like. So here, for example, on this old, worn out old rustic fence, I thought to myself, what can I do with this? Now, so um, the first thing I thought of was what is in the background? Now, you can see there's a bit of open sky there. And so what I decided was I'd work out if I can place the Milky Way core in that sky. And it turns out that I can. So that's facing in the easterly perspective. So at certain times of the year, the core is going to come straight up over the top of this old uh, gate post and fence. So what do we do? We shoot it. We light it up. We put somebody up there and it comes up as a pretty good image. Now this one is actually a fairly obvious subject for a nightscape image. I mean, it's got charm and it's got character, it's old world. Um, but it's still a matter of lining it up and knowing what to capture and what's going to be in the background. Uh, so once again, it's just a matter of getting out the app, uh, compass, stellarium, photo pills, whatever you've got to work out and establish what's going to be in the night sky behind. Uh, and you might want to capture star trails. So if that's the case, you need enough sky to be able to capture the rotation of the stars across the sky. You might just want to capture the Milky Way core, which is what I've generally done here at this location, because there's a nice gap there between the trees. And one piece of advice I would give you, uh, and I fell for this trap for many years, don't avoid trees. I used to think that if there were trees overhanging my scene, that that scene would be a waste of time and not useful. That is not the case. As long as there's a gap, as long as you can see something through there, go for it. Now I'm sure a few of you guys may remember a photo shoot I did here um, of this old hay shed under the Milky Way. 
Now the hay shed itself is in a fair old state of disrepair, but that doesn't bother me in the slightest. I like the rustic look of it. In fact, there's been a few uh, pieces of timber that have fallen off since I did that photo shoot. But nevertheless, uh, the thing I was looking for when I came here was the perspective. So you can see in the background there is enough sky behind the structure to get some stars and Milky Way. And that's exactly what happened. So it's just a matter of planning where the Milky Way is going to be in the background. So in this case, it comes up directly behind the structure of this old hay shed in uh, probably about uh, February on to about June here in the Southern Hemisphere. Comes up beautifully, got some awesome images here. And all I had to do was put some lights around the hay shed here to light that and a couple of people in front of the um, thing here and that's all we need to get a great nightscape. Now I just wanted to stop by this scene because uh, there are occasions when we're out shooting at night time and the weather conditions don't really behave themselves. Clouds roll in or whatever. So that happened to me one night and I was here close by this old ruined gig under the peppercorn tree. So I decided to create a light painted um, subject and it came up really well. So again, it's totally surrounded by trees, but don't discount the fact that there's a shot there to be had. All right, now sometimes all we want to do is create a simple scene and have a simple object in the scene. Now in this case, I've got this fence post here, which I love by itself, but I decided I wanted to add something in the foreground. So I just got this old bike, leaned it up against the post and created an awesome nightscape image because at the time it was in about September, the Milky Way core here in Victoria, Australia, was setting over in the southwestern sky and it looked absolutely beautiful over the top of this post. So I put the bike there, did some light painting and it came up really well. Now, talking about obscure places to shoot nightscape images, it has to be right here. But one night, I set up a time lapse right underneath the branch of this tree, facing again down towards the southwest. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to get the setting Milky Way core coming down over there across the top of those trees. Why did I settle on this location? Well, to be honest with you, I was looking for something that framed over the top. Of the Milky Way, which is what these trees do. Uh, you may remember when you see this video, I had a little bit of trouble with uh, the light falling over. Maybe it was a rabbit or something that's bumped my light and the light went out for a while. But nevertheless, the composition was chosen because I wanted to frame and I used this tree to frame across the top. I guess that's the definition of an obscure composition. Okay, so here we have a windmill. Now windmills are classic nightscape images subjects and this one is a fantastic windmill. The problem being it's nestled right up against the tree. There's a massive big gum tree on this side and there's sapling gum trees growing on the other side and there's only a limited opportunity to get a night sky behind. So I can tell you that I knew about this windmill three years before I photographed it. And why is that? The reason is because I didn't think I could get a subject with all of these trees around. Well, one night I decided I'm gonna give it a go and just see what happens. And thankfully, I was able to get a beautiful shot and I also did a time-lapse here. And the time-lapse has come up so well. So please don't limit yourself simply because you think um, because there's too many trees around. 
it doesn't always apply. So without a doubt, this is one of my favorite compositions. Somewhere where you can actually get an elevated position away from all of the trees and yet still have a foreground subject that acts as like a frame on the bottom half of the shot and the Milky Way frames the top half. Just beautiful. So this is the definition of what I call an amazing composition made from a very simple foreground subject. As I said before, you would drive past this tree, you wouldn't even see it that it's fallen over. And yet when you come to the position where the camera is now, it is an awesome backdrop for the Milky Way. Just love it. All right, well, it seems like I'm not the only one who's been out here in the middle of the night chasing prey. Have a look at that. People say to me all the time, how do you find your compositions for your nightscape images? And just have a look at this. This is actually grass with a rusty old little bit of fence post uh, and fencing wire. Now, most of the time we just walk straight past these things, but you know, it can be a great foreground composition. All I had to do was line something like this up with the night sky behind and you've got an image. That's all it takes. We have to open our eyes. We have to start seeing the small details. Now, those of you who have followed my work long enough would realize that the main feature of my work is the foregrounds. I spend more time looking for foreground compositions than I even worry about where the Milky Way is going to be because that's the same all the time. It's the same every night, it's the same every year. And these things are all around us. All we have to do is stop and have a good look. So in my last video, you would have seen that I went through the setup of how I photographed this old plough. Now, these ploughs like this are on farms all across the countryside, and often they're hidden away in paddocks in corners, overgrown with trees and bushes, and you can't even find them and see them. But all you need to do is, is locate something like this, give it a bit of light painting, line it up with the Milky Way, and you've got a great image. They're everywhere. In the Australian countryside, these things were used on every farm, so there's plenty of them around. Well, you guys already know how much I love a good fence post shot. And you probably recognize this one because it was the subject of a video I produced about three weeks ago. Now, I lit up all of these fence posts and the surrounding grass area and the wire over there with the Milky Way over there behind it came up so well, I was so pleased with that. But you know, there are fence posts like this everywhere. It doesn't matter what country you're from or where you're located, there are fence posts everywhere. There's fences, there's posts. Now, where I live in country Victoria in Australia, I'm blessed because there is so much open country, big land, lots of fences. The other thing is uh, where I live is classified as a class two bottle dark sky. What that means is I've got lots of beautiful dark sky to photograph and I feel very fortunate for that. Uh, and this location here, probably I would say about 85 to 90% clear every night of the year. So there's plenty of opportunities, but you've still got to see the composition and go for it. I would photograph this stuff every day of the week. All right, well, when it comes to obscure nightscape subject matter, this takes the cake. I mean, this old engine placed here on the side of a creek bed, 
Now, the thing about it is, you never look at it twice. But you know what? There's a clear sky behind it, so why not? Why don't we do something with stuff like this? I reckon it looks awesome. Now, there is a backstory behind this. The farmer told me that the truck blew up, the engine blew up in the paddock over there when it was working years ago. It's been sitting here. They pulled it out and put a new engine in. It's been sitting here doing nothing. So I'm going to shoot it as a nightscape. Now I can just about hear the cogs ticking over in your brain thinking, what on earth is he going to do with this? Well, to be honest, I probably had the same thought myself when I first saw this roll of wire. But you know, it's just so rustic and absolutely country gorgeous. I thought, what am I going to do with this? Then I had an idea because there's a big open patch of sky over here in this direction. And I thought, you know, it sort of looks like a telescope. <laughs> So here's my creative brain ticking over, thinking, what if I put my camera down the bottom of the tunnel and shoot through the middle of it? What can happen? Well, that's exactly what I did. And the image came out awesome. I'm really pleased with it. And so I think this composition, more than any other that I've showed you today, illustrates my point beautifully. Just about anything can be made into an awesome nightscape image. All you need is some sort of sky, it doesn't have to be a full horizon sky, uh, and some sort of foreground subject. Then a little bit of light painting and you've got the elements required to create some magic. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Love for you to subscribe to the channel. Love for you to also to make some comments and suggestions down in the comments section. Love to read those and I do my best to answer every comment. So feel free to do that. All right, until next time, I'll see you guys out under the stars again. See you later.